What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here for PackersNews.com, live on Facebook, late Monday afternoon. I have had what the kids might call a day. Uh, it started early in Dallas and is winding up here in New York City after many delays. Uh, thankfully, though, American Airlines got me home safe. So, after watching Mike McCarthy and various assistant coaches speak into microphones, I thought I'd jump on here on the old trusty Facebook Live and talk to you fine folks about your Green Bay Packers. See how you're feeling a day after another thrilling last second victory from Aaron Rodgers and company down in Jerry World. Brennan, hello. Josh, what a game. Yes, indeed. King and Jordy update. Uh, we won't get any true updates until Wednesday. Um, King being in the concussion protocol means that he will not speak to reporters until he's out of it. And with Jordy, Mike McCarthy was asked about it this afternoon. Um, he said that the report by NFL Network about a hamstring injury was erroneous, um, but he would not confirm anything. And we won't get our first glimpse into what is ailing Jordy Nelson until Wednesday afternoon when we get the first injury report. Although McC Mike McCarthy did confirm that he was injured, he would not say what the injury was. McCarthy going for two made no sense. You? Well, Mike... Yeah. I didn't love it, but I understand why he did it. Um, the difference between being up four or five, I understand the possibility that they may go down and score a touchdown, which of course they eventually did. Um, but I don't think McCarthy's thinking of it like that. He's trying to get up uh, a six point lead there, try and get a touchdown to beat him. I, I, you know, it's a gut on his part. It's a gut call. He's not going off a chart at that point. Uh, he's already and he's got a uh, a kicker and an operation um, that's missed two extra points already in that game. You know, it's it's a judgment kind of gut call from McCarthy. Again, it's not what I would have done. I would have kicked it, but you know, he's that coach and he's one he gets paid the big bucks. Martellus is live on Instagram. Yeah, I actually was just checking it out. Um, he is he is spitting fire. Is that is that what you kids say? Let's see. O line looks pretty good. More so, play calling or personal changes, lane to left tackle, etc. Um, I think it's a bit of both. I think uh, Campen is definitely earning his paycheck. Uh, the work he's done, um, just getting those guys ready every week, kind of a different you know, lineup, pretty much every week so far this this year. Um, yeah, I thought it was an interesting call to go with McCray over Patrick at left guard. Uh, he's clearly helped in the run game, I think, and it's funny having. Um, Taylor at left tackle actually I think help, helps the run game because as good as Bakhtiari is in pass protection I think Taylor's a better run blocker so I think that kind of helped um, jump start the offense uh, they really got that running game going Aaron Jones obviously a big part of that um, made some really nice cuts uh, really good job setting up his blocks um, but those blocks those probably the best run blocking they've had all year um, like which is prone to happen when you get a bunch of big body guard types out there road grading guys. Better old line coach than the Dolphins. <laughs> Ouch. You think Aaron Jones is our future back? You think he will take over our starting position? Um, I do think it'll be a bit of a timeshare once Ty gets back, but I think if Jones keeps up doing what he did yesterday in Dallas, there's no way you can keep him off the field for an extended period of time. Uh, if he continues to produce like he did, uh, it'll be his job. You know, they will still work in Ty. They will still have packages for him. Um, but there's there's no way. If he, Like I said, if he continues to do what he did against Dallas. Now, you got to remember, Dallas has been a pretty poor defense against the run all season long. Uh, plus, they were without their best run defender in Sean Lee. So, you do have to temper expectations a little bit. I don't think it's going to be like that every single time he's out there. Um, but, if he can continue to produce... Um, it continues to add that spark, then, yeah, I don't see how you take him off the field. Uh, how can McCarthy possibly stick with Capers as a defensive coach? He is brutal. Well, look at what he's working with. I don't understand how people always just jump on Capers when they have issues with teams and look at who they're playing um, on their side of the ball. You know, you've got Kevin King, who's your best cover corner. You drafted specifically for games like this to take on Dez. Um, is out after the very first play of the game. So everything you've worked on all week is now out the window. Uh, you've got guys like Morgan Burnett, Demarius Randall going in and out of the game with injuries. Uh, 
you know, I just, I understand it's frustrating to watch uh, an offense be successful. And then that's the other thing. That's a pretty darn good offense they're going up against. And those guys get paid too. So while I understand the angst when it comes to Dom Capers, be realistic about it, at least. I don't mind realism, but this kind of knee-jerk reaction about how quote-unquote terrible this, you know, lifelong coach who, you know, knows more football than we will ever know. Um, and yeah, I get it. That's not a pass. That's not, doesn't give him a lifetime guaranteed contract, but mercy, look at, look at the game. Look what he's, what, what is actually happening on the field rather than just summarily dismissing the guy every time another team scores some points. Uh, what happened to Jordy and has he been completely healthy this year? Well, he was healthy coming into the season, um, but uh, we don't know what happened to him. It appeared, whatever it was, appeared to happen on the two-point conversion, but we won't know specifically what it is until Wednesday when we get our first injury report. Watt and uh, OBJ done for the season. Glad we don't have any injuries like that. It's, I wrote a, a little bit, I kind of referenced that in my mailbag on Friday. Someone asked if, you know, the injuries were going to doom their season. And, I, you know, you got to knock on wood a little bit, but they haven't had season-ending injuries. Yeah, they've had injuries that have kept guys out, especially, you know, obviously David Bakhtiari now has been out for a good stretch. Um, but there hasn't been a season-ending killer injury to any front-line starter. And you just look around the league. I mean, hell, I think the Ravens have something like 15 guys on IR already, or at least, like, double digits. Um, you know, the Chargers absolutely were killed with injuries this summer so you know the Packers as much as as hard as it is to watch guys go down and they're in and they're out um they have to you know adjust things week in and week out because of injury they're still ahead of the game compared to a lot of teams including the team that they're going to be facing next week and in the Vikings who have been without their starting quarterback and now have lost their what looked to be a very promising young uh running back in Dalvin Cook he's gone for the year you know I mean the Packers yes they're injured but you know they're 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 weathering the storm, and they're kind of, you know, getting healthy now and getting some playing time for their young guys. It, it's, it could be a whole lot worse in that regard. Clay, back to old form, killing it. Kyle, I agree. I thought he played very well yesterday. Um, I thought it was a nice adjustment from Capers, especially in the second half. They went to a lot to that kind of a four-man front with uh, Clay dropping out and going into coverage. Um, you saw him kind of didn't really cause the interception, but he definitely, you know, I think Williams definitely heard footsteps. Um, you know, that was a new look. That's not something we've seen a ton of. Saw a little bit of it in camp. And, uh, you know, that, that was a, a big part of kind of shutting down Jason Witten in the second half, too. They finally got bodies on him, got a little closer in coverage. as something that was really killing them in the first half. But, um, yeah, I think Clay has played very well. And, you know, obviously the health is a big part of it. Um you know, the sack totals aren't there. The big sacks aren't there. Um, but they do tend to come in bunches. So I, I tend to think he will get it going sooner rather than later in that in that regard. Have we found and signed all the remaining tackles out there yet? No, Jeff, they have not. Packers going to get a first round bye, Aaron? Oh, Dylan, it's way too early to be talking about that. Um, although as it stands today, they are the first seed in the NFC. But um, yeah, a lot of ball game left there. Pass defense looked a little confused. What did you see? Yeah, Michael, that's a big product of what I was talking about earlier. When you lose Kevin King that very first play, and then all of a sudden you're scrambling, uh, mixing and matching guys. Guys are going in. They had Demarius Randall in and out twice. Yeah, Morgan Burnett gone for a stretch. Um, you know, that's going to affect your defense. At one point, the, the biggest run they allowed, uh, 25 yards or so, came when they had 10 guys on the field. And that was after a, a change of possession. Um, so they were all discombobulated. Capers said today they played more combination personnel combinations than they have all year in that game yesterday. And it showed that the confusion you're talking about, I think a lot of guys, Capers talked about having to coach guys up on the sideline to teach them what to do in certain packages, uh, positions they hadn't played. So that tells you where they were. And I think you're going to see some of that going forward. I think they got to coach up uh, Josh Hawkins to play a little bit more in the slot because I don't think they can count on uh, Rollins at all. Man, the guy just looks overmatched. Let's see. You excited to see Trubisky tonight? Yeah, Kyle. Pumped. No, I'm, I, I'm not pumped to see or excited to see Trubisky, but I am excited to see the new Star Wars trailer at halftime. Just being honest. How long is Ty going to be out? 
I don't know, James. McCarthy did say as soon as he is healthy, he will be playing. I know there's some thought that maybe they would hold him out until the bye week to try and let those ribs heal up, especially in light of how well Aaron Jones played uh, yesterday. But I got to think, you know, once he's healthy, he'll be back out there. Now, when that is, that's a good question. Rib, ribs are a tricky injury to navigate for a running back. I mean, that's a position where you take a heck of a lot of punishment. And, uh, you know, teams know you've got injured ribs. They're going to be going for that cage. What was wrong with Crosby for missing two extra points? Uh, well, definitely some issues with the snap on the second one. Um, Pat McAfee, uh, former Colts punter, broke it down. I put it up in the morning buzz this morning. Um, you know, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a rare combination there, one-two, for Crosby to miss two of them. And the first one of the snap looked okay. just looked like R Crosby hooked a little bit on him and hit that upright. But this is definitely something they're going to have to work on all week. And Ron Zook said, today we'll get it fixed. You better hope. So does Rip just not play much anymore? Not a ton. They don't use a ton of eye formation, which is where traditionally he'll be in. He had, got, he had a carry yesterday, and um, I think he will be used down the stretch, and you know they will use him situationally or in at matchups they think you know they can take advantage of with his presence. But I don't think he was ever going to be a linchpin for the offense, especially when they go to one back stuff with Jones. Uh, Jones ran almost exclusively one back sets out of, in college. That's where his strength is going to be. And, you know, as long as he's back there, I think you're not going to see lots of fullback. Got to be happy at four and one with the quality of teams we've played. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think they've, they've weathered the storm, so to speak, both on the injury front and the, the quality of opponents. Now, what teams are in September are so very rarely what they are later in the year or what they, you know, kind of reveal themselves to be as the year goes on. So can't really say yet if they've beaten some world beaters, but um, they were tough games and they played them close, except for down in Atlanta. And, uh, yeah, I think sitting at 4-1, and one, they, they got to be happy. No doubt about it. How the Cowboys get five yards after a flag and a timeout without a play on the field? Yeah, it's a good question. I don't have an answer for you. Before the game, someone predicted that Aaron Rodgers would throw a game-winning TD with 13 seconds on the clock. Did you see that post and who posted it? No, I did not. Jordy News. Ray, there is no Jordy News other than McCarthy did say he was injured but would not say what the injury was. We have to wait until Wednesday when we get our first injury report. Unless one of our intrepid reporters breaks the news first. Can Packers beat the Falcons at Lambeau in the playoffs? Yes. We need to win these next two going into the bye. Preferably, yes. Too early for the number 13 MVP chance? Probably. Jeff Janis doesn't get the attention he deserves as a gunner on special teams. Well, he should get it for that incredible play he made yesterday when he kept uh, the return to negative one yard, um, which was also, obviously, you got to compliment Justin Vogel on an amazing punt to completely flip field position. But, of course, that doesn't really happen without that great tackle from Janice. And yeah, I think, you know, that is a big, big part of his game now, especially since he's barely returning kicks at all. I and mean, he had his first kick return of the season yesterday and it was a bit of a disaster. Um, but outside of that, yeah, I think that gunning position, that's where he's going to make his mark. Kurt Warner's prediction. Yes, I did see that. That's right. He, they do their bold predictions on NFL Network every Sunday morning. And Kurt said that Aaron Rodgers would throw a winning touchdown pass with 13 seconds left. How much better is the Vikings defense compared to Dallas? How are they different? Um, they're a lot better. They're, I would say they've got a lot more talent on the perimeter and in the secondary in general. They Zimmer does a really good job of making sure his guys, and they, they play a lot more man than the uh, Cowboys usually do, although the Cowboys played a surprising amount of two-man yesterday. Um, but they love to hug what they call mug the A-gap, where they bring those two linebackers up, especially on third downs. And they bring their two linebackers up to kind of sit in that gap right in front of the center and then try and confuse the front to, are we coming, are we dropping out, what do we do, is one guy going, one guy coming, things like that. Um, Zimmer always coaches McCarthy's offense really tough, you know, whether it was here you know, against Green Bay as the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, whether it was as the defensive coordinator uh, with the Cincinnati Bengals back in the day. He always has presented issues for both Rodgers and McCarthy. Um, one of the things he does, 
And this go, there's a couple guys in the league that do this. Uh, Jim Schwartz is another one, where it is very clear, especially at home, that he tells his guys on the perimeter, his his defensive backs, you know, when they play man, they play press man, like true press man, and they ride that kind of that five yard zone that they get where they can put their hands on a receiver they try and extend that as much as they can so if they're still bumping a guy or holding a guy five six maybe even seven eight yards down the field they will continue to do that until it gets called and even then they'll keep pressing on it um but they will test out crews early and often and if a crew as they are often want you know going to do for the home team if the crew lets it get go, you know, the couple questionable third down or what have you, you know, they let that go early, then that gives them the green light. And then it's, you know, you can count on that kind of coverage throughout the game. And it always ends up frustrating Green Bay. It always, the, you see it almost every time. You saw it last year in Minnesota. Devontae getting in his head, getting out of his game. Rodgers getting frustrated. You saw him throw the pick at the end of the game last year. Um, you know, it, it, that is how they play. And it works. The reason they go back to it is because it works. And then they keep their two safeties deep. And, you know, they make them work down the field. And they don't give them any big shots. And, you know, that's not the kind of game that the Packers traditionally have wanted to play with McCarthy and Rodgers. Now, the big difference is if they can get Aaron Jones going the way they got him going yesterday, that changes the equation. Now, I'm not so sure they can do that in that environment. But that is a good way to get them out of that playing that style of defense. Uh, because they're going to have to then drop one of those safeties, and then maybe they can work something on the perimeter one-on-one. But uh, that's a long way away. It's Monday. We're talking Sunday. The Vikings have to play tonight, um, which I am interested to see how that game goes because um, you know they have a very good defense, and I'm interested to see what they can cobble together on the offensive side of the ball. Janice is the new Jared Bush. Joshua, I've been saying that all summer. Uh, I had a lot of questions during camp about why he was on the team, why would he make the team, etc., Man, you need special teamers. You need guys who excel on special teams and who can then play from scrimmage in case of an emergency. Jarrett Bush being the perfect example, a guy who stuck around for years because of his special teams acumen. And then, lo and behold, when pressed into action in the Super Bowl, of all things, comes up with a big interception, you know, to help you win a championship. You need, like, you need guys like that on your team. And Jeff Janis is absolutely one of those guys. Bears win tonight. You heard it here first. Thanks, James. What's happened to Nelson? Uh, Don, we don't know. We know he was injured. McCarthy did say he was injured, but he will not say what the injury was. So we have to wait till Wednesday to get an injury report, which I find asinine. Just tell us. Um, but McCarthy wants to play his little game, so we will have to play along. Is Bradford playing tonight? Yes, Josh. That was the report. I saw Stacey Dales of NFL Network put it out there this morning. I'm sure other people have put it out there by now or confirmed her report that uh, he took... Um, First team reps with the team all week, and will be the starter tonight. Kevin is their best corner. Yeah, Alex, I agree. If you're talking Kevin King and the Green Bay Packers, I don't think there's any question. And that's kind of crazy, but it's kind of true. Let's see. Why was McCarthy stuck in Atlanta? Kyle, I think everybody was stuck in Atlanta. Um, I didn't see that McCarthy was stuck in Atlanta. In fact, he was in Green Bay. But um, Domofsky was stuck in Atlanta. I know that. And I was delayed twice. Everything on the East Coast is screwed up today. <laughs> Chase, I've lost weight. Now I just think I've grown facial hair or something. I don't think I've lost weight. D-line was outstanding when fresh versus the run. Paul, I thought they held up pretty darn well. Um, you know, they. it was very similar to last year in the playoff game where, you know, Zeke got his yards and he... he they absolutely did wear down there at the end of the game, um, as they're going to do against a power running team like that, and a back as talented as Zeke. But I thought for the most part, they did a good job of containing him and making sure nothing ruptured big. The only big kind of let loose run he had was when they had 10 guys on the field. You know, <laughs> So, yeah, I think for the most part, they held up pretty darn well, and they played a lot more base than I expected them to. Um, but I think that manifested itself in them kind of helping control Zeke. Now, you're never going to stop him, um, but, you know, they uh, they did a good job. All the love from Washington State. What's up, Washington? How are you? Super Bowl season, what do you think? 
a little too early for that, Carter, but, you know, I picked them to lose in the divisional round. I'm sticking to that for now. Richard Rodgers needs to be played more. Him and Aaron got a special connection. You know, it's funny because I think he does have, you know, some of, if not the best hands on the team. You know, but you're not going to play him over uh, Martellus Bennett or Lance Kendricks. They just offer way too much uh, in the passing game, especially. But Bennett is a dual threat. His ability to block out on the edge is far superior to either of those guys. Uh, I think, you know, Rodgers is important in that he has a history in the offense. He's definitely able to step up if called upon. But that probably won't happen unless there's an injury in front of him. I think those other two guys are just that much more dynamic. Coaches are working well with our depth in each position. Dale, I would agree. I think the coaching staff is doing a heck of a job across the board. Um, I do think, you know, Joe Witt's probably pulling what little hair he has left out of his head watching all those defensive backs and having to coach him up to play stuff that they maybe hadn't been trained to play um, so far this year. But that's part of the gig, man. you get you got to get guys out there and you got to make them, hold them accountable. Um, yeah, I think the linebackers, I mean, look what Martinez has done this year. And I think Jake Ryan's kind of been the forgotten man. Um, while I don't think, you know, he's a world beater, but I think he's played solid football. Um, that's a testament to Winston, Winston Moss right there. Um, so, yeah, and you go across the line. I think Turgovac has done a good job getting a guy like Quentin Dial at the last second at the start of the season and kind of implementing him into the, you know, the defensive rotation. He's played more and more as the season's gone on, and he's played well. And that's all, te- that, all, you know, that is definitely a testament to those coaches. Haha is overrated. He isn't regressing, just not as good as people thought. I got some thoughts on this, Corey. I do agree that his press clippings probably did get ahead of his actual ability and play on the field. I think last year, right up until the week he was named to the Pro Bowl, which I don't know when that was, week 12, whatever, 11, 12, around there. It was the, I think it was the week of the Texans game. Prior to that moment, he was playing at a very high level. But literally that week, it all started kind of going south on him. That's when you started seeing him take bad angles to the ball, not wrapping up his on his tackles. Um, his play really fell off. And I thought, okay, you know, he had a really good start of the season. It kind of tailed off, but he'll go away. He'll have the season, the you know, off season, and he'll come back, and he'll hit the ground running in camp, and we'll get back to seeing the haha we saw at the beginning of the, of the year last year. But that hasn't happened. He came into camp playing pretty much like he had played at the end of the season last year, and it's continued throughout the season. Uh, they're five weeks in now, and he has not played well. I said it on Twitter last night. Um, he definitely does need to pick up his game a little bit, and whether that is in coverage, whether that is coming down and run support, in all aspects. I think he has not given them what they would have expected from a guy who is going into his fifth year. So, yeah, I... I'm not ready to say that he's not as good as everyone thought, because I think, like I said, the beginning of last year, he was playing at a high level. But uh, for whatever reason, something happened there, and his play has definitely fallen off. Do you think we ever truly replaced A.J. Hawk? Hmm. That's a random question. Um, no, but only because I don't think they wanted to. I think they're, they've been trying to kind of evolve. Um I don't think you ever really wanted to bring in another guy like A.J. Hawk. As great a career as he had, he was a you know very integral part of the defense that helped win a championship. Um, I don't think they've ever really gone about trying to replace A.J. Hawk. Uh, let's see. Hawk was so overrated. I don't agree with that, Manny. Um, I know people were disappointed in him because of his draft position, but I think he had a really good career in Green Bay. Brooks Smith's read on Dak run. Adam, yeah, that's a good question on the Dak touchdown run. Yeah, yes, essentially, because it's he's supposed to, in traditional, when you're defending, you're, you're there on the edge, and that's where it puts you in no man's land. Uh, you're supposed to read the quarterback, and if he hands the ball, go after the, the, uh, the back, and if he keeps it, you take the quarterback. Now, Dak did an amazing job of t- bring, putting that ball in Zeke Elliott's belly and holding it for as long as humanly possible. And you see, you know, Brooks crash down there to take the ball carrier, and then Zeke just takes it out and kind of waltzes around that corner there. Um, I have little doubt, you know, it's it's one of those things where you've been defending Zeke all game, and you're just now, you're, you're just it's in your body, you're just going after him on every play. 
they just timed it perfectly. It was a great play call, great time to kind of make that coaching call where you're like, okay, they're going to crash down on Zeke because they know he's been, you know, killing them all games, been running through them, especially on this drive in particular. They're all geeked up to try and stop Zeke. Well, now's the time to let Dak keep it. And I just think the, you know, you got to get, you got to tip your hat to the Cowboys there. I think that was just a great play call and a great execution on their part. Aaron Jones is a true running back, and Jordy's TD is what happens when you have a real running threat. Uh, I agree with both of those sentiments. Uh, although it's funny because I, we've seen throughout the years, Aaron Rodgers can make play action effective even without a real running game. He's done that before. Uh, when they were 15-1, and one, uh, they didn't have a run, great running game, but they were wicked good at play action. Um, it's funny, Aaron said that that was a check at the line of scrimmage that they hadn't used uh, since the 2014 Miami Dolphins game, where Jordy scored on a very similar play. Um, but yeah, absolutely, you see on the tape there that that threat of Jones absolutely sucks up the linebackers and leaves a massive void uh, there at the back of the end zone, which they took advantage of. Uh, do you think Jamal has little to no patience? I don't know if it's a lack of patience. I just think it's a lack of vision. Um, again, in, in Dallas there, there, one of his carries, he just plows into the middle of the line when I th it looks like something's opening to the right. So maybe that is a question of patience, but I just think it more, it's more a question of vision. But, you know, and then that's the thing. He's, his strength is in the zone scheme. Like when he's running uh, that lateral zone stretch that they like to run and then finding that cutback crease and then getting upfield, that's what he did really well at BYU. Um, you know, doing power through the A gap. That's n that has never been his his uh, forte, so to speak. But you know, I think with Jones, what you saw last you know, yesterday was just you know the vision and the, and the combination of vision and patience that you know he was able to set up his blocks and make cuts and get into that second level quickly uh, in a way that Jamal Williams and Ty Montgomery have, haven't been able to this year. Why is Lindsley sna snapping low all the time? Well, you saw it definitely happened as the game went on. Um, Tom Silverstein asked Corey about that in the locker room yesterday, and Corey admitted that, you know, um, Irving got into his head a little bit. You know, Irving got to Rodgers twice for sacks. They were really worried about him, and Corey was trying to get the snap out quick and get up in pass pro, and it was causing him to kind of, you know, sail those not sail them over, but, you know, having those die quick, you know, they're going so slow because he's just trying to get it out and get his hands up to um, work on his pass protection. So I have little doubt they'll work on it this week, but, yeah, he's definitely cognizant of it. Who are we talking to right now? Greg, I am Aaron Nagler. Jones is so good at accelerating out of his cuts and is so fluid. Absolutely. Um, it's pretty impressive, and it's not... You know, that was never a worry. I think the big kind of question mark was how he would hold up in pass protection and, you know, the adjustments of the line of scrimmage and things like that. And Rodgers gave him, you know, flying color grade uh, yesterday. I asked him about that after the game, and he said I had zero concerns. Um, he was great back there. He got everything, got every check. You know, he basically gave him an A+. Plus. So uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how much you know, he parlays that into additional playing time. Any word on Jordy? Jordy, nothing yet, Gary. Uh, Wednesday, we'll get our first injury report. Will the Giants raid our practice squad of receivers? It's possible, Robert. Um, although I don't really see that being uh, Jerry Reese's M.O. Are we negotiating with Adam's agent? Last I heard, there was nothing going on. And the price is only going up. I think Clay has been off, but Aaron doesn't seem to think so. Uh, no, I don't. I think Clay has looked really good. Um, you know, the, the box score may not reflect it, but I think the tape does. <laughs> is McGinn blacklisted by Green Bay Packers and why? I don't think he's blacklisted. Um, you know, I, I have a little experience here. I, I, when I started Cheesehead TV, we were trying to get credentialed for f darn near a decade. You know, and the Packers consistently said they don't credit, or they don't, Credential or you know people they you know credit accredited organizations, and Bob has essentially started a website 
much like we did with Cheesehead TV. And the Packers are sticking by their policy. Um, I don't agree with it. I didn't agree with it when I was at Cheesehead TV. I don't agree with it uh, when it comes to Bob McGinn, but that's their policy and they're going to stick to it. Do you think we'll re-sign Adams and HaHa -Ha this season? No. Um, they've got the fifth-year option on HaHa, -Ha, and given his kind of spotty play to start, they can let that ride and see if he improves um, before even trying to discuss that. Uh, with Adams, if you're Adams, why on earth would you want to talk to the Packers now? Um, your price, like I said, is only going up week by week. The more plays he makes like he did in Dallas and against Chicago, um, you know, the money he you see the deals that guys get on the open market. You know, why, why on earth would he talk to Green Bay, who you know traditionally always come in low, always come in with trying to get some hometown discount. If I'm Adams, I'm hell-bent on trying to get to the open market. We'll see. Oh, and Braden, I saw your thing about a different time every day. Hey, man, I'm sorry. I got delayed twice out of Dallas. Um, I dropped my bags here, kissed my girls on their cheeks, and then came on live. Sorry, man. Where was Geronimo Allison? Uh, Steve, yeah, he was conspicuous by his absence, but I think that's going to happen when they're playing, you know, more two, two tight end stuff. They've got Jordy out there. They've got Cobb and Adams. There's only so many snaps to go around, so Geronimo, unless there's an injury, he's going to be relegated to the bench. Lots of money spent this offseason coming. Scary. Well, that's the price of doing business. I mean, the, the big one, obviously, the big fish, the big whale, is Rogers' contract. you got to think that's going to be addressed this offseason. And that's why people would talk about all the cap money they've rolled over. You know, that's a big reason why. The last couple of years especially. You're going to have to pay that man. No doubt about it. Because playing for the Jets is only about money because nobody can throw you the ball, Aaron. Is, who said anything about the Jets? Although maybe he'll go play for the Jets. Who knows? You guys, you know, it's quote-unquote only about money. Yeah, it's about maximizing your, uh, your earning potential, you know? This might be his one chance to go get paid and set up his family generationally. You know, and I know you and I have no concept about that, but that if he chooses, more power to him. If it's more important for him to go out and make you know ten million dollars more than he would here in Green Bay, then yeah, he has every right. And I, why would you begrudge him that? Let's see. How about Raji last night, <laughs> Ross? Perfect. Thank you. Um, all right, everyone. I I'm going to go uh, basically collapse. But I'm sorry if I couldn't get to your question. They do go rather fast. Uh, I will be back on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. I will not be on tomorrow. But uh, be sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest. We've got great stuff up today. My voicemail video should be up soon. Um, and Pete Doherty has four downs. Uh, that just went up a couple hours ago. Um, you know, some additional thoughts from the game. We'll have all the new stuff from McCarthy and the assistant coaches and uh, Eric Bronchek and Pete's, uh, Pete Doherty's tape review of the game. Make sure you're checking it all out. And, of course, I'll have morning buzz in the morning to wrap it all up for you. So keep it up, PackersNews.com, for all the latest. Uh, till Wednesday, talk to you guys then.